So we got a 2009 Lexus ES350 and we're going to be changing the heater core, evaporator core and to do that we got to pull out the dash. So I've already started actually before I uh, started capturing some video but I've got the, I'm going to pull the front seats out. So I've got the driver side bolts out and uh, just doing the passenger side. You have to remove these, of course, these little covers that cover over the bolts. Here and there, I got those two out. So I'm just gonna move the seat forward here, all the way forward to get them out, out of the back. Uh, I've got the battery still hooked up, uh, but after I get these seats moved up here, I'm gonna disconnect the battery because uh, that's very important when you're going to be taking wiring connectors apart like what we're going to be doing on this job on the seat that way we don't end up inadvertently causing any issues with the electrical system and uh, especially when we're dealing with the dash and you got um, airbags involved you want to make sure you do that just come out here and you got a couple of bolts here just pull them out there put that back so like I said I'm gonna go pull the battery cable off I already got it loosened I also already took out the uh, su strut support cross member because I need to get down into the heater hoses and the evaporator core hoses lines. It's already had this loosened off battery negative cable, so we'll just get that loosened up. And uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get these seats loosened up here. Not sure how well this is going to record in the dark, but uh, we need to get these connectors apart underneath. As you can see, we have this wire harness that comes up and uh, they do have some safety clips on them and uh, we'll be looking to remove those to ensure that we can get those apart. So I'm going to go get a screwdriver and uh, I'm gonna grab a light. All right, just so we can see what we're doing down here. The yellow ones are always airbags on cars. And uh, so we need to ensure that we're careful there. Although I had the battery disconnected for at least 90 seconds to discharge the system. So we're in good shape there. This is a, in its day, this is 2009. This is a luxury vehicle and so we're going to ensure that we do an excellent job of doing this work because there's nothing worse than you know doing a job on a car and especially when we got to take the dash out and having squeaks and rattles afterwards so you got to ensure that you do a high quality job when you're doing these now, goes to stand for every job we do, we want to do a high quality job, right? Now, I haven't had these ones apart before. But you can see that's the harness there. And uh, 
I'll just lift the seat out. Being very careful not to scratch any of the customer's trim. And uh, through the through the night, we'll put that seat back inside, uh, back inside. We'll get this vacuumed out for the customer too. Uh, the reason why we took the seats out is because we're gonna end up pulling the carpet back and pulling the console out. holder on that one we'll just push that back on there there we go sometimes these seats have sharp edges on them underneath you got to be kind of careful just to know what you're what's the worst thing that can happen when you're working under here uh, generally speaking uh, this is delicate work and so we don't have any leather gloves on they're a bit cumbersome when you're working in here so that's good uh, so we'll just pull pull this seat out like i said we'll put this take the seat out and then overnight we'll put the seats back in the vehicle in case it rains This way I don't have to uh, take the seat belts out. It's already a huge job, so we don't want to make it bigger than it is, that's for sure. So we'll just put those there, we'll put the bolts down here. These are really nice floor mats in this vehicle uh, that hold these in. You know, I'm talking about floor mats, but you know, what a great idea these guys uh, have to uh, keep your floor mats from moving on you using a, using a clip mechanism like they do. But you just have to get them to pop out here. There we go. That's good. All right, so we're gonna move over onto the other side. Pretty much everything needs to come apart here, so we're gonna get some tools to take this stuff apart might be kind of hard to see I'll have to be anxious to see uh, what the video looks like with uh, very low light situations so Keys. 
just because I'm going to be taking that all apart. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want anything getting lost that I don't know about. You always got to watch for fasteners because uh, car manufacturers like to use a lot of a lot of clips but then they'll throw in one or two screws and you don't want to be caught off guard next thing you know you got uh, clips broken the whole kit and caboodle. You don't want that, that's for sure. And this is felt up here, you can't see it very much, but this is a part of the headliner. And this is a felt material, and so we want to ensure that we don't get that dirty because that's very difficult to get clean again. So what I'm gonna do is go get some gloves on and uh, we'll take that off. Just because we got to get that pillar off because we're going to be pulling the dash out anyway. So. new pair of gloves on so these just clip in and again we uh, just want to be careful with these clips oh it's so bright outside my eyes are having a hard time just with my eye troubles that I've had it's so painful actually working out here in the bright light doesn't seem light from the camera but it's reflecting off the hood of the car and uh, it's just causing me a lot of discomfort it's almost like I need a light but I need sunglasses it's so hard to describe this is a unique clip on the top here I've never seen one like it All right, so we got that out. That's just good. I wonder what we got going on here. Some kind of addition to the family. Oh, it's got a remote start on it. Somebody's put a remote start on this thing. That's all right. Let's go get some tools. Get some tools, start pulling this panels off. And yeah, I got an airbag down here too. Uh, it's got a steering wheel airbag and it's also got a, a lower air, airbag in it. If you can see this down here or not, but I had this old 3 8 cordless impact. It's only a 9 volt battery, but I had it rebuilt the battery because it was a uh, um, what do you call it? Whoops, 
Um, new ones are nickel metal hydrides. This was a um, NICADs, is that what they were called back in the day? Yeah. So, I don't know what size this Lexus uses. They're built by Toyota. So, so this is a uh, 10, no, what is this? Yeah, 10 mil, so that's good to know. Except the only thing I don't like about this impact is this chuck. But it's, uh, it's a snap-on. It's been a good little tool. I'm going to take some of these covers off. magnetic tray for all the screws and whatnot. Just so I don't lose them. Let's put them in this tray for now. That way all those I have a couple of those trays. We'll put put all the parts in them. I wonder if he even knows there's switches down here. I got neat stuff hit all over the place here. If you look. Down there. Got all kinds of neat stuff on these cars. Hidden away. Oh, that's the tire pressure monitor set button. Isn't that something? I wonder if he knew that was down there. I'll have to look that up because his tire pressure monitor is uh, is flashing on there on his dash. I think it needs reprogramming, so I'll have a look at that. Definitely, definitely have a look at that. Okay, so I'm not sure if you uh, where we left off here, but uh, I've taken the um, the finish panel uh, off of the gear selector on the console, so that just pulls out. Uh, it's just got a few clips on it. You do have to pull the uh, gear shifter out of park. Um, of course, I've, as you recall, I had the battery disconnected. So inside of here, underneath here, there's a mechanical release that allows you to shift it into down so that you can, into whatever gear you want, neutral or drive or whatever, uh, just to give you enough clearance to get that uh, over the gear shifter, okay? Um, in addition, I've pulled the back vent off uh, on the back here of the console. That just pulls out. You can see that there's um, just some uh, friction fit uh, pieces there. Um, there was two 10 millimeter head bolts in here, two, one in there, one in there. Uh, undo these two connectors, uh, open up the cover and pull out the, uh, underneath there's this black part that goes down inside, just a kind of a, a cover. And uh, there's also, Two more, uh, as you'll see, two more holes down in there where there was two uh, 10 millimeter head bolts down in there as well. So we got that off and uh, get that light oriented right there.
I pulled this out. This is just a divider for the uh, for the cup holder. I don't know why I had that out, but I did. And then what happens is this whole panel will just uh, it just pulls back just like that, and uh, that whole console will come out. There is one connector up there on the front for the um, cigarette lighter which was in this cigarette lighters there there was one connector that was right there which is this harness right here and then there was two screws two phillips head screws that had to come out of there you can see that they were holding right in there so so that allows that to to come off all right we're continuing on this uh heater core replacement and uh, we're going to do the evaporator core in this 2009 Lexus ES350. Uh, as you can see uh, we've taken apart a few more things since the last video but we've removed the of course uh, the center console is gone and uh, the radio. Uh, we've taken out both the left and the right um, airbags, the glove box. Uh, we're just continuing on with going to remove this uh, A-pillar uh, trim and uh, speaker covers and we'll get the instrument cluster out um, and continue on in our process of getting this um, heater core out of here. I'll just give you a good look around, see where we're at thus far. And uh, we'll be back. Okay, we're back. We got uh, the A pillars off. Got speaker grills. Uh, there's 10 millimeter bolts underneath the speakers grills. Under all of them. Took the speakers out. Associated wiring. Got the instrument cluster out. And any basically wiring. There's. Uh, ambient air temperature sensor tube there that uh, came off just unsnaps out of the holder there um, but what we need to do now as there's some through bolts through underneath the hood we've got the cross member taken off that goes from the strut towers uh, now we're about to take the wipers off uh, just like to get some orientation of of the wiper blade locations taking note of that because these are on a spline as soon as you take them off uh, typically they can go back in any position so we want to make sure that we put those back in the right positions because we need to take out the uh, the wiper cowl and uh, underneath the cowl you'll find your transmission motor and transmission for your wipers uh, but there's some bolts coming through that we got to take the nuts off uh, to take that upper dash pad off so we're gonna do that now. So you can see we've uh, taken off the wiper transmission uh, cowl cover. That's what it looks like there. It's just got a couple of, as you can see, a couple of these um, retainers. Have the Phillips head, just uh, take a little screwdriver and as you're turning it with a Phillips screwdriver, just uh, turn that and get a get a screwdriver in between in between this plastic, these two plastic parts. Just wedge it right in like this as you're turning the Phillips screw. That'll help that to come out. And uh, underneath we have one 10 millimeter underneath the. You'll see a little plastic uh, cover here, and uh, it just goes in over top of that hole it's a grommet just to keep the water out and underneath that like i said there's that uh, 10, mil 10 millimeter head bolt that you're going to want to get out of there that's it underneath there one eternity later okay so you can see we've got the uh, upper dash pad off now and uh Basically, we just have a few more um, wire connections to get off, and then we'll be taking the main support uh, because we're trying to get at the HVAC case, which is right there. 
uh, as you can see in white so we need to just uh, pull some harnesses back and uh, get that structural member moved over it's very very possible we're going to be able to just uh, swing it uh, from the passenger side over on an angle enough just to get the case out but uh, we'll see how that goes uh, every car is sort of different you can see we've got the dash out uh, dash pad off here and uh, just just as a pointer uh, the airbag stays in there passenger side airbag and as does the the duct work uh, you'll see some eight millimeter head screws and you might be tempted to take that off but it all comes with the upper dash pad all the duct work okay so uh, we'll report back shortly I thought I'd take a little uh, shot here of uh, kind of one of the last steps uh, before the heater case comes out um, we had of course uh, these bolts and spacers to take out uh, their Torx bolts that come through from the driver's side door or from the passenger side door they come in just on this side and they actually tighten into these spacers but these spacers are 12 millimeter hex and uh, you can see how they go in uh, you'll want to take these out um, in order to give you enough space beside the the, the uh, reinforcement bar here and of course there's three on the other side on the driver's side and um, underneath the hood we've uh, disconnected the AC hoses and the heater hoses uh, you can see them through the through the uh, front engine compartment into the front engine compartment there and I'll show you those uh, when we put it back together but I'm just about to remove the uh, HVAC case uh, out of this spot um, of course we had to lower the steering column down uh, there's two nuts and uh, one bolt that goes through uh, in order to connect that together so uh, looks like a bit of a mess but it's not too bad uh, I'm just gonna sneak it out uh, just maneuver this uh, support bar out of the way enough to uh, get the heater case uh, to come through the bottom okay so you can see we've got the HVAC box out of there now you can kind of see the orientation of the support member dash and HVAC support member here's a little uh, something you want to pay attention to this uh, module is mounted right on the back side of the HVAC case okay so it's buried in behind the HVAC case and it's almost impossible I'm sure somebody could have got this connector off uh, but I couldn't get my fingers down in there but this module just simply slips up and slips out so out of the case and I'll show you that right here basically it mounts right inside this little section here on the module on the HVAC module HVAC uh, case call it an HVAC module but yeah so you can see how it comes out there basically sits in the car like this against the firewall and uh, just remember there's the the evaporator drain tube goes down through the through the floor and uh, you'll definitely want to remember to put that back in through the hole to the outside of the vehicle on assembly uh, or else you'll have wet carpets so not good and uh, inside of here is the cabin air filter and I did notice that on this customer's vehicle uh, the cabin air filter has not been changed in a little while just trying to sneak that out of there you can see see what we end up with inside of a cabin air filter that's not been regularly maintained so that can really restrict the uh, 
outside air fresh air so all right well we're going to inspect this a little bit further and uh start getting it apart um you can see the uh, heater core lines right here uh, this goes through the firewall and you got the inlet and the outlet heater hoses that attach on and i'll just try and capture a picture of that in here um what i'll do is i'll just grab a, a flashlight so as i said you can uh see the heater hoses right down in here i have some heater hose clamps on that that's for design to pinch off the heater hoses so that the fluid doesn't come out that's the lower one and i've just got the uh, upper one tucked away here so you can see see that and then down here is where the evaporator refrigeration lines attach so that's basically it underneath the hood this model of vehicle is very easy to get at to the firewall some models you actually have to pull this whole wiper assembly out and pull this whole uh, wiper console but uh, on this particular vehicle we don't have to do that so that's very good so we, you can see we got the uh, HVAC case apart we got the heater core out and we also have the evaporator core out it's simply a case uh, cover where the evaporator is housed inside of uh, round 10 screws gets it a, gets it apart uh, of course you have to take apart the um, thermostatic expansion valve has to get unbolted off the evaporator core before uh, it can come out of the case it's just right there that bolts on with these uh, two uh, these are four millimeter head four millimeter head Allen screws that just uh, bolt together but you have to take that expansion valve off before you can get it out of the case because the expansion valve the evaporator core fits through and comes up through and then the expansion valve bolts on to the evaporator Okay, so you got to take that apart first. Okay, so you can see we got the uh, new evaporator core installed. There's the old one there uh, again. Uh, and also a new thermal expansion valve. It's just so much work to get this box out. This HVAC module box. Different names for it, whatever you want to call it. But... Uh, we just want to make sure that we do not have to do this job again and so we're changing the evaporator core the actual problem customer concern was reported that there was lack of heat and uh, it's confirmed there was a lack of, there was a restriction inside the heater core so we have a new heater core to go in it as well that'll be kind of the next step that we go through we'll be putting the new heater core in and uh, buttoning it up and making sure everything's good and then we'll be putting the uh, HVAC uh, module case back in all right just give you a little update here uh, it's kind of dark in here I realize but uh, give it a little bit of light here um, got the HVAC case back in HVAC case uh, back in successfully uh, got the mount the as you can see the reinforcement bar that holds the dash and the HVAC in uh, all back tied in all bolted down everything looks good from that perspective we got rid of the old remote start system you can see the harness laying there uh, as it was redundant didn't work anymore didn't have the controls for it didn't have the uh, remote fobs full for it so if he wants to put in another remote start system down the road we'll be clean start there so uh, just gonna button this back up put the dash back uh, dash pad back in after I do uh, get a little bit of wiring tied back up again and uh, we'll get the dash in it's supposed to rain tomorrow so I need to get this dash in to uh, be able to work on it uh, inside the garage hopefully tomorrow so 
that's it for tonight so success well done got that all back in so i'm happy with that progress all right just another little update here um just about ready to put the upper dash pad back on basically the dash uh, got everything kind of set in place uh, ready for it to go on and uh Hopefully this will go back on pretty smooth and uh, we'll get this buttoned up here. Uh, the rain's passed through and uh, so I was, I'm able to do this work outside which is very uh, convenient because I can open the doors wide and uh, able to get this thing together. So yeah, look forward to putting that back all back together again. All right, just another little update. We got the dash pad back in upper dash and uh, I'll be doing uh, all the hookups um, getting this back together and tie it all back in again so we'll report back shortly uh, thought I'd take a little uh, progress shot here uh, progressively getting uh, this stuff back together uh, do the instrument cluster next uh, concentrate on the uh, driver's side now and uh, Get this back together then we'll put the a pillars on I'll show you those clips uh, that I was talking about earlier. They're actually I'll get my light because you can't see it that well, but they're right there You can see what kind of shape they are and uh, You basically have to grab a hold of them and twist them to get them out of there. That's those covers. Anyways, I'll show you those hopefully a little bit later. So you can see what we've got left to get back together here. Coming along nicely. Thought I'd capture a little bit of footage inside the rear air plenum. You can see that streaking, that pink colored streaking down inside uh, this comes from the bottom of the box. Uh, I'll just get a light here to help us see. That attaches right onto here, and that comes to give the airflow to the to the back of the vehicle. Those ducts just tuck in beside beside the carpet next in the console. Uh, that's for the rear, uh, for the passengers to get some airflow back there. Um, obvious signs of leaking in the past in there and uh, I'll just take you and show you the heater core because we saw we saw traces of that same leakage you can see on the heater core I hope that you can see that okay you see that pink uh, that's actual coolant because this does have long life coolant in it so you can see where this heater core has been leaking so it was going to give trouble no matter what uh, regardless of the blockage the internal blockage uh, it had some external issues as well so just wanted to capture that for you Okay, as I promised, I was going to show you this uh, pillar installation. Because uh, like I said, it has a kind of a goofy clamp on it, a uh, connector. Uh, really a retaining pin. And you can see it there. Hopefully you can see it there. and get a good shot of it you can see the shape of it so when you're taking this apart you can see the the shape of the hole so it's it's actually when it's installed it's actually this way and it has to come out this way so you have to turn that thing 90 degrees in order to get that thing to come out. So we'll see how difficult it is to get back in here. Again, I have the gloves on. Uh, I've got some cotton gloves on this time. 
but we want to make sure that we don't get this thing dirty so so we'll try and sneak this down inside and uh, sorry it's a little a little rough on the camera shooting here Not sure if that thing will just push back in there or not. But you can, I think you can kind of see what I'm talking about there though, hopefully. I'll try and get the light up in there. Sorry, it's a little bumpy. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. You can see the shape of that thing, eh? So I'm gonna try and get that thing, get that thing in there. It may just push in, but I might have to twist it and turn it to get it on. So hopefully you can see that okay. All right, thought I'd give you a little update here. Uh, we got her all back together and uh, looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results. Got the seats back in. I gave it a good uh, vacuum underneath. Uh, when you had the seats out, good opportunity to vacuum it all out. So I didn't vacuum the back seat yet, so you can see that. But uh, everything looks good here. Take a walk around. Show you on the other side. Very pleased with the results. I ain't gotta do the underhood stuff just yet, but uh, everything turned out pretty good. I have that cardboard on the hood because they're on the windshield. Because as I was stating in the beginning of the video, uh, it's very hard for me to see. So. You can see everything's back in order. Everything looks good. Pleased with it. So I'll get the coolant back into it and uh, evacuate and recharge the air conditioning and give that a try. Make sure everything's hunky dory. Okay, talk to you later. Alright, so we got her all buttoned up here and uh, I recharged the uh, air conditioning after evacuating for 45 minutes. Uh, I vacuum bled the coolant system and uh, as you can see we got the heater hoses all hooked back up again. Might be a bit dark in there for you but uh, we got that all buttoned up and rinsed it clean. So uh, AC is blowing very cold. Uh, heat's blowing very hot so I'm happy happy with that. Uh, I'm just going to take it and uh, I gotta put the floor mats in it yet and uh, clean the inside of the windshield and uh, that'll be done.